Making headlines tonight, Wendy's drop Centurion as New Zealand take command. Wayne clash before heavyweight title fight. And Jamaica's sprint star chomping at the bit. Good evening and welcome to the Major ZDK Sports Edition for Friday, December 11, 2020. I am your presenter, Terry Laraji. Now for the details. We begin tonight bowling off with cricket. Henry Nichols rode his luck to score his sixth test century and lead New Zealand's middle order fight back capitalising on many drop chances against the West Indies on day one of the second test in Wellington overnight. The left-hander was unbeaten on 117 from 207 balls at stumps for New Zealand, who were without Captain Kane Williamson due to the impending birth of his first child. West Indies fast bowler Shannon Gabriel took his 150th test wicket in his 50th test match, while Shamar Holder bowled well for his two wickets on debut, so the Windies will be pondering what might have been. Nichols, who had come to the crease some ten minutes before lunch, survived a difficult period at the start of the second session when Alzari Joseph peppered him with short balls from over the wicket. It was a top-edge pull that fell in no man's land, a short leg catch that didn't stick in Shamar Brooks's hands, and a hook six that could have been a catch at long leg had Jermaine Blackwood stayed on the rope rather than move some ten yards in. All that before the most glaring misses when Nichols was dropped at first slip twice, by Darren Bravo on 47. The Windies did their best to stick to their tasks, however the home side closed the day with almost 300 runs on the board after being sent in on a lush green pitch that offered pace, movement and bounce. Scores stumps day one, New Zealand 294 for 6, Nichols 117 not out, Gabriel 3 for 57, Shamar Holder 2 for 65. Speaking after the day's play, West Indies other debutante, Wicketkeeper batsman Joshua De Silva said he thought Captain Jason Holder handled his ball as well. We just wanted to to stick to the plan, just keep going, keep going at them, work to the plans. If if we ha somebody had a bad spell, the next guy would pick it up. So we were just trying to motivate the guys. He did an excellent job, and yeah, we just wanted to stay stick to the plan. That was the most important. On the drop catches, a frustrated De Silva said that it is sometimes the way it goes. I mean, that's how it goes. It's always frustrating when you drop catches, but we have to just look forward to the next one. We can't do anything about it now, so we're just going to move on to the next day and try and get them again. Joshua De Silva. Jason Holder has come in for some criticism for bowling himself with the strong breeze at his back instead of his out-and-out -out fast bowlers. With the Wellington ground renowned for its windy conditions, Shmar Holder said early in the day bowling was very challenging. Early up, yeah, the conditions changed early up. Um, the, they had a few, it was overcast and a, a bit windy. One end, the wind was coming a bit strong, so it was kind of tough with the run up. And then coming on to the back end, with the ball a lot older, it, it, thing, it started to do a bit. So uh, it, it was a lot more challenging in terms of you could make the batsman play a lot more or try to set him up. Instead of early up, it was just going straight on. Shema, hold on. And New Zealand A had the better of the opening day against West Indies A after winning the toss and electing to bat on the first day of the unofficial test. The home side went to stumps on 264 for four with Michael Bracewell unbeaten on 93. Meanwhile, Cricket West Indies president Ricky Skerritt says all-rounder Andre Russell will face no backlash from selectors over his decision to opt out of the recent T20 tour of New Zealand in preference for the ongoing Sri Lanka Premier League, LPL. Russell helped the Colombo Kings into an LPL semi-final spot yesterday. His two-wicket burst in the 16th over turned the game on its head and propelled Colombo Kings to a narrow six-run victory over fellow West Indian Johnson Chowser's Jaffna Stallions after Russell earlier smashed a 14-ball 21 with two fours and a six as Kings counted to 173 for four off their 20 overs. With the T20 World Cup scheduled for India next October, there have been calls for Russell's non-selection for that event, along with upcoming tours. But Skerritt, while speaking on Trinidad Radio, I-95 FM, reiterated that the stated selection policy in place was not one designed to punish players, either by denying them international duty or no-objection certificates to play in foreign leagues. Russell has asserted that playing for the West Indies does come first. Meantime, West Indies under-19's head coach Graham West is happy with the progress shown by some of the players that were under his command at the last under-19's World Cup in South Africa, who have now gone on to the senior level. However, while speaking on ZDK Sportsline show, 
must explain the difficulty, enhanced by the times we are now in, to keep the players interested in pursuing a cricketing career. You're absolutely right. It's been a, it's been a really frustrating time, just not being able to have activities for these players. In the case of Seals and Ned and Young and Melius, with them going into CPL, certainly continued to be in touch with them to make sure that they were comfortable with what they were moving into. Obviously, it was very new to them, you know, professional franchise cricket. But um, I felt that they all dealt with it pretty well. And the really positive thing is that having had conversations with them over the last six weeks, you know, all four of them have impressed me in terms of what, what they've learnt over the last year. 18 months, obviously some played in the last Super 50 as well as the Under-19 World Cup. During this COVID climate, the emerging players team, who won the last edition of the Regional Super 50 Cup, will not be part of this edition. However, West says we just need to be patient until they can re-enter the competition. Ideal world, we'd certainly be able to provide more opportunity for those younger players. In this climate, though, I think it's just gonna, we're just going to have to wait for nine months till we're able to run that, that Super 50 back closer to what it was and what we were starting to get familiar with with an emerging player team, which obviously did incredibly successfully in, in, the, in the last edition. But even before then, it had certainly shown signs of being very competitive. Graham West. While speaking on yesterday's Sportsline show, CWI CEO Johnny Grave explained how regional and international cricket should resume in February next year here in Antigua and Barbuda with first up the hosting of the regional Super 50. We've got two world-class venues in the Coolidge Cricket Ground by the airport and the Sir Vivian Richard Stadium. It's a national stadium, so Antigua is blessed with two world-class facilities, as, as you say, other countries in the Caribbean are. So uh, we made the decision to bring the Super 50 Cup here as the first tournament back, but that's also with a view of bringing all the six regional teams into Barbados first and then Trinidad second for the West Indies Championship, the four-day competition that we have at regional level. So uh, between Barbados, Trinidad and Antigua will be looking to host our regional cricket in 2021. Johnny Grave. In addition, Antigua and Barbuda will host Sri Lanka for three one-day internationals straight after the regional competition. And the Antigua and Barbuda Cricket Association ABCA 10 Splash Tournament is continuing tonight at the Sir Vivian Richards Cricket Stadium, where New Winthrop's is playing Bethesda, followed by Pickett's up against Bolands at 7.30 p.m. On Saturday... Rising Sun take on combined schools at 5.30, while Jennings play All Saints at 7.30. Entry is free, $5 to park your vehicle inside the stadium. In other sporting developments tonight, moving into drafts, the members of the Executive Committee at the Antigua and Barbuda Drafts Association, ABDA, met on Tuesday, December 8, and have selected Eustace Samuel and Dacia Johnson as the two nominees to be honoured by the Ministry of Sports, Education and and creative industries at its upcoming National Sports Honours. The Sports Honours ceremony is scheduled to be held on February 13, 2021. Both individuals were chosen for their sterling and enthusiastic contributions to the development and enhancement of drafts events organised by the ABDA throughout the island. The association would also like to advise drafts members and prospective members that the training sessions continue every Thursday evening starting promptly at 6.30 p.m. and ending at 8 in Otters. Stepping in the boxing ring, Anthony Joshua warned Kubrat Pulev he will face a real one in Saturday's world title fight as the pair exchanged heated words at Friday's weigh-in. The 39-year-old Pulev goaded Joshua as the unified world heavyweight champion took to the scales, drawing an animated reaction. The pair stood face to face, Pulev shouting and Joshua waving his finger, with security keen to intervene. Bulgarian Pulev weighed in at 239.7 pounds, a 9 pounds drop from his last fight, while Joshua was 4 pounds heavier than when he faced Andy Ruiz Jr. in December 2019, scaling 240.8 pounds. Joshua knows a win could pave the way for a bout with fellow Briton Tyson Fury, where all four world heavyweight titles could be contested for the first time in history. Kicking into football, Arsenal finished their Europa League Group B campaign with a 100% record as they overcame Dundalk 4-2 in muddy conditions at the Aviva Stadium last night, while Tottenham boss Jose Mourinho said it is impossible to keep his whole squad happy after a largely second-string Spurs side beat Royal Antwerp 2-0 to progress to the Europa League last 32 
as Group J winners. Touching down in Gridiron in NFL's opening game of Week 14 last night, the LA Rams ended their six-game losing streak against the New England Patriots thanks to a convincing 24-3 victory. The result snapped New England's NFL record streak of 17 consecutive seasons with double-digit wins. The Patriots fouled to 6-7 and seven with three games remaining. Driving into motor racing now, Lewis Hamilton described having coronavirus as an experience after he returned to his Mercedes car at the season-ending Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Hamilton missed last weekend's race in Bahrain after contracting COVID-19 but tested negative on Wednesday in time to race at Yao Marina. Hamilton ended the day 0.203 seconds slower than teammate Valtteri Bottas as both Mercedes drivers unusually set their fastest lap times on the medium tyre compound, with Bottas fastest in the second practice session today. The main race roars off on Sunday. Shooting into basketball, LA Clippers star Paul George has signed a maximum contract extension the NBA franchise announced on Thursday. George, a six-time NBA All-Star, will reportedly be guaranteed as much as $226 million over five years. It is an extension of an additional four years for George, who had a player option for the 2021-22 season after joining the Clippers from the Oklahoma City Thunder ahead of the 2019-20 campaign. Running into athletics, Jamaica's Brianna Williams intends to open her 2020-21 track season next weekend in Freeport, Grand Bahama, where she intends to compete in the 150 metres and 300 metres. The 18-year-old star made the announcement on social media yesterday. Like many track and field athletes, Williams was not able to compete much during the last season because of the COVID-19 pandemic that prompted the cancellation of meets around the globe. Training well and eager to compete, Jamaica's national junior record holder is chomping at the bit, says her coach, Ado Bolden. According to Bolden, Williams will contest the 300 metres on the Friday and then the 150 metres the following day. Swing into golf, Patrick Reed is on course to win the DP World Tour Championship and the race to Dubai after a sublime second round gave him a two-shot lead. Reed started the season-ending tournament in Dubai in pole position to become the first American to be crowned European number one. Victor Perez led after the opening round to take the initiative in the race to Dubai battle, but Reed took charge on Friday with a stunning 8 under 64 to lead by two shots at the halfway mark. And finally tonight on this day in history, in 1954, a tail ender's nightmare is born. There have been few more chilling propositions for batsmen in cricket history than facing Sylvester Clark in his pomp. Friendly off the field, frightening on it, he once got in trouble for throwing a brick into the crowd in Pakistan. He only played 11 tests for the West Indies, such were the fast-bowling riches at their disposal then. But the merciless Clark, Wisdom Cricket Monthly's obituary, said... He would have bounced his grandmother, tortured batsman at county level with Surrey, leaving many a number 11 in a cold sweat. He collapsed and died suddenly in his house in Barbados in 1999. And that story has brought us to the end of our sporting developments for tonight. Now to recap our top story. Henry Nichols rode his luck to score his sixth test century and lead New Zealand's middle order fight back, capitalising on many drop chances against the West Indies on day one of the second test in Wellington overnight leave New Zealand in command. I have been your presenter, Terry Laraji. Thank you for listening. To watch ZDK's sports package, go to the YouTube channel of Terry Laraji, the straight bat, and subscribe. Stay tuned now for your Voice of America update. Do enjoy the rest of your evening and have a great weekend. Forever